take garbage and make it shine This whole project is asinine Wait some time with me, I can guarantee This old junk will soon tone the line I can't find the words This song is absurd We're polishing turds We're polishing turds Alright, today on Polish and Turds, the most dignified TV show you have ever seen. We're going to talk about cylinder heads a little bit, and in particular, we're going to talk about valve jobs. Uh, what is what is a valve job? You know how are the valves working. How how's that? What's happening when the valve opens and closes? Uh, and how the valve job plays into that. And uh, you're going to take a look at those things, uh, the machinery that's involved and the process that's involved in altering the valve job. Um, these things have kind of sketchy, uh, this has got like a two inch uh, intake valve in it, which is weird. Um, so we're going to put a slightly bigger, like 205 in here, assuming I think the seat's going to be big enough. Uh, and we're going to also, at the same time, we're going to valve job the exhaust as well, and I'm going to probably change the the exhaust valve seating angle, not the exhaust valve angle, but the seating angle. Um, and that's the angle that this sits on, uh, that the valve sits on when it closes. That's what we're at the ceiling portion of the valve. Um, stock form, it's 45, and I'm going to take it to 55. Um, I do that on a lot of stuff, and that really helps flow and power. Um, but anyhow, we're going to go over that today on polish the turds. Alright, first thing we're going to do is change the seating angle of these exhaust valves. And these valves have a 45 degree angle, it's right here, that when the valve closes that's what it mates on in the cylinder head and that's what forms the seal and seals the combustion pressure in the cylinder. Uh, and 45 is pretty common, it's almost on everything. Some diesel stuff have a, have a different seating angle but 45 is pretty standard so you see that 95% of the time. Um, in our case, we're going to move this to 55. So I'm going to take the head or the part that holds the valve here and slide it around this way. To a mark I made years ago. at 55 um, and we're going to slide the valve in here this is an old Sioux valve grinder um, but all these things work pretty much the same they're not a whole lot of difference in how they work this one has centering cones that grab the stem and there's kind of a little art into getting it in the machine just right you'll know when, when you if you don't because it'll have problems but in our case, in the, what we're doing right now is we're correcting, this is also the used valve, so it's going to probably have a little wob wobble and warp to it to start with anyhow. We're going to correct that and change the angle to 55. The seating angle that we've generated is a lot more, is a 10 degrees steeper, right? And the reason we do this is because that allows us to run a larger throat diameter. That's the 
real reason. It's less abrupt uh, for a larger throat diameter, which helps us get more exhaust gas out quicker. But that's uh, that's the process for grinding these valves. We're going to repeat that seven more times, and then the exhaust valves are ready to ready to go in. talk about valve jobs without talking about uh, the insert and how we accomplish this basically the way this works is we use a cutter like this one that bolts onto this cutter body that is uh, turned in the valve in the seat and scrapes off metal and what we're trying to do with this the profile that we're trying to cut into the seat is in this cutter right Therefore, with most standard valve machines, if you want to change the profile, you have to change the cutter. And I have, you know, dozens of these things that we use depending on uh, the valve job that we're trying to achieve, uh, you know, which is determined by the cylinder head, the chamber, uh, um, numerous factors, the type of racing, the time between rebuilds, and just tons of stuff. But to give you some idea, you can see in this book, we have uh, a bunch of different cutters described. And uh, they describe the seat angle. This one's a 45, top angle's a 30, 60. That's a pretty run of the mill type cutter right there. But these things will vary depending on the engine. And, uh, you know, over here we got some more complex ones. These are, these are more, more representative of the stuff that I use in here being a racing engine builder. Um, there's more angles and they're a little more complex. And generally speaking, the exhaust like this will be, uh, or most exhaust cutters, I don't know what this is intended to be, but they'll have a radius inside the seat angle instead of more angles. So your radius here, that's pretty commonplace with exhaust stuff. But anyhow, this is the, the basic principle here of what we're doing. We'll, we'll pick one of these for the job, attach it to the cutter body, and then that's what we're going to use to scrape the seat out and achieve the seat uh, that we're looking for. Remember that the seat does different things. The seating angle is where the valve sits on. It's the only one that does, does mechanical contact. It, the valve touches the seat and that's where we seal the cylinder. The rest of them are really just to aid airflow. You know, um, That's really their only purpose, to help turn the air in and out of the cylinder. Anyhow, let's... Let's uh, move over to the seat guide machine and scrape some of these seats up. Okay, so this machine, uh, generally re referred to as a seat and guide machine, I don't exactly know why, because most of what we do on it is valve jobs. So you'd think you would call it a valve job machine. <laughs> Apparently, uh, it's sometimes not. But we do seat, seat and guide work as well on this machine, but day to day, the, what it's usually doing is valve jobs. Um, this particular machine is a Tobin ARP, uh, it's one of the first machines I ever bought. Um, the Tobin Arp is a company that was bought out by Sunnen. The modern day Sunnen machine is basically the same machine with a variable speed up top to control your spindle speed. Other than that, it's pretty much the same thing. Or I say modern machine, I don't know what Sunnen is selling nowadays, but what you've seen in a machine shop for years is a Sunnen uh, seat and guide machine is basically this. Um, I've had this machine for a long, long time. Um, anyhow, the basics of how this works is there's a pilot that goes in your valve guide and when we can, we use carbide pilots because they're very, very stiff uh, and also the tolerance between the bore of this seat cutter body and the, the uh, pilot it can be tighter. So there's less slop and movement here when we're machining the seat. Um, basically, the uh, pilot goes in, we use a level 
bubble level to level the cylinder head this way and then we use a another bubble level to get an indication of the the uh, valve if there's can't like a big block Chevrolet or something the valves are canted so you have to get things straightened two different ways so if, the, if there's can't we've got to roll the head over right uh, an inline Chevrolet like this we don't have to do that so we basically just make sure everything's straight this is straight with the pilot and then we go from there um, so now we've already done that we're straight here straight here uh, I'm gonna first uh, th this the uh, cutting the head here is on an air table right and it's a uh, uh, there's ways here with lubricated with oil and uh, this floats and then we use air pressure to lock it in place when we get it where we want so the idea is there's a ball drive here this takes up if it doesn't everything doesn't actually have to be hundred percent straight because there, this tolerates some this gives you some forgiveness uh, when it's when it's running this thing but the straighter you get it the better your your job is going to be um, so we're going to uh, float this head unit over here yeah see I have no resistance now in the ball unit uh, now I can come up. I'm going to put a spring here. And now we can be begin cutting this seat. If you look, this is the cut seat. Uh, now the, the profile on the seat matches the profile on the cutter. And the next step is I'm gonna uh, lap this valve in and see where the seat's making contact with our intended seat patch on the contour here and see if we need to move in or out. Um, I bet it's pretty close, but we'll double check that. Focus, there we go. And uh, and we'll see how it looks on the valve. If everything looks right, we'll either adjust or go down the line and do that to the rest of them. But uh, this valve job is what I would consider far more aggressive than the one that was in it. Uh, you see here we got metal that we're going to take out afterwards in the porting process. But our throat is already just a little bit bigger. It didn't change it much, but it's a little bit bigger. We may actually change it some more manually. But uh, that's a 55 degree seat with a radius. All right, now we got all these exhaust cut. Really came in nice. This whatever the seat material is cut pretty good. When a bunch of struggle. And now we're going to switch and do the intakes. If you look right now, I got them 
both sitting in there. It's just sitting on the old seat. And the intake is considerably higher than the exhaust. This is somewhat normal. When you do a 55 on the exhaust, it uh, it sinks it a good bit. Uh, but as we cut this, it's going to come down and get closer. Probably going to stick with a 45, depending on how things look. I'll yeah, maybe go 50, but I don't really want to open a big can of worms on this project here. So probably going to stay with a 45 on the intake. And uh, I've got a cutter picked out that I use quite a bit. Uh, how I decide on the profile here is uh, really probably a combination of uh, experience and intuition. I couldn't tell you exactly how I come up with it, you know, how I make the decisions I do on this, but this is something I know works on something. We're not get, trying to get too complicated with this valve job if we don't have to. Um, but anyhow, now I'm going to cut these in the same fashion and uh, we'll see how that turns out. All right. Now we've cut our intake seat and we've I've lapped this valve in and it laps in pretty much perfectly. Um, I had to move it out one time, which is I kind of start inside so I got room to go out, especially when I'm oversizing a seat, um, putting a bigger valve in, it's easy to do to get it dead on. I spread it out one time and now we're perfect. Seat's perfect. That is some real good stuff doing right there. And uh, now, so we blend the chamber a whole lot better. It's kind of hard to tell with the die in place, but anyhow, now I'm gonna go down the line and then it'll be just a couple more operations and we'll be done. All right, there's one other thing that we're gonna do uh, with these intake valves. These are kind of just budget intake valves, pretty run of the mill, nothing special. And as is common with valves like this, they have just the seat angle, which in this case is a 45 cut on here and nothing else. So we're gonna back cut these things, which is cut another angle here to make this, um, this transition here less severe. And that'll help with the uh, airflow just a little bit. Uh, so I'm gonna chuck up the valve. And slide this back to, I'm gonna go with about 30 or so degrees another angle here if the lens will see that and that's has nothing to do with the mechanical sealing of this engine that's just purely for airflow a lot of your better valves have this already done but these are inexpensive valves so we're adding this to this and that it should it'll help with airflow a little bit all right we got two cylinder heads all valve jobbed uh, slick and ready to go they should seal up great a lot of times uh, we, uh, we'll uh, lap the valves in afterwards just to double check ourselves and make sure everything's sealing. Uh, like I said, the reason we did this valve job really doesn't have anything to do with engine sealing or wear or anything. All that looked fine. Um, we're doing this in this case because we're trying to improve imp performance by improving the airflow both in and out of the motor. And uh, on the next episode of Polishing Turds, um, the most dignified television show you've ever seen. We're going to um, port these heads and work on the airflow side, but this is all built around the valve job itself. Um, the valve job is kind of the, the uh, where everything starts with airflow. So that's why we do this first because it's super important. But anyhow, all this is ready to go, sealed up, and next time we'll be grinding, uh, making some chips 
and uh, hopefully drastically improving the airflow in and out of this motor. Hey!